Hi fellow keyboard lickers and welcome to another awesome game development tutorial. In the last episode we fixed some bugs in the pause game feature and today we will learn how to center the game around the player so that we in a later episode can add a scrolling tile map in the background. What we will do now is to try to reason a bit over how we can get the game centered around the player. So first we will open GIMP, an open source software similar to Photoshop and we can start drawing the coordinate system of the game world. So we create an X axis and a Y axis and our game display can then be represented by this purple rectangle here. And when the game starts everything looks good and we have the player in the middle of the screen and let's say we also have an enemy to the left of the player. Now if we want to refer to the position of any game object we can think of it as a vector or arrow going from the coordinate 0, 0 and ending in the middle of the game object. And if we look at the values for the player here, we see that we get a value in X and a value in Y and we can call these values the game coordinates of the object. And since the display is placed with its top left corner at the coordinate 0, 0, we can say that the display coordinates of our game objects have the same values as the game coordinate representation. But what will happen to the overlapping coordinate system if the player moves out of the display? We will then have a vector A representing its game coordinate. And if we draw an imaginary display centered around the player, we see that we would need to offset the player with a vector B to convert the game coordinates into a display coordinate. And if you have studied vector algebra, you know that if you add a vector A to a vector B, you will get a vector starting from the starting position of A going to the end point of B. Let's call this vector C. So to clarify, or to confuse you even more, I will just summarize what our vectors represent. A is the game coordinate of the player, and B is the offset needed to convert the game coordinate into what we call a display coordinate. And to show you why we need this B vector for the offset, you can see by visual inspection that if we draw a vector to the enemy and then want to calculate what offset it needs to move to the display, we see that this vector is actually the same B vector as we needed for the player's offset to the display. You are very lucky by the way to get to see my expert level drawing skills and surely there is not a single doubt in your mind that these two B arrows look exactly identical. And finally we will write that the C vector represents the display center coordinate. And if you are an algebraic genius just like myself you will have recognized that vector A is known to us since it's the position of the player and we can also easily calculate the C vector since we only need to know the pixel width and height of the display and divide them by 2 to find the display center. So the variable we want to solve for is the game to display coordinate offset B. So we can start by writing the equation A plus B equals C. And to solve for B we need to get rid of A. So we subtract A from both sides of the equation and get the result B equals C minus A. I know that some of you who are watching will think this calculation here was very simple and that I went into too much details and I'm also sure that some of you will think that this was very complicated and that I should have provided more details. In the latter case I link to a video in the description on the basics of vector addition. So now kids when we're done with the theory we will toss away all math books and dive into the code implementation of the coordinate conversion. We start by navigating to the game class and scroll down to the draw method. What we want to do is to come up with a smart way of performing the coordinate conversion from game coordinates to display coordinates. So what we will do is to start with the player's draw method where we will pass a variable called game display. We then hit alt plus return and select create field game display in game which we declare to the class called game display. Since this class doesn't exist yet, we can hover over the name and select create class game display. Since we aren't really sure how we will use the class yet, we will leave the implementation for later and head back to the game class. We now see that the player's draw method is complaining since we are supplying an unexpected argument to it. 
so we will have to change the method head of it. But before we do that, we can pause the game display as argument to the other object's draw method as well, so we don't forget it. And notice here that we only need the game display in the classes which has the game object as its base class, since the user interface elements that we call game panels already are drawn with display coordinates and have no actual connection to the game world. Okay, so now we can move the cursor to the player's draw method and hit Ctrl plus B to navigate to its implementation. Then we simply modify the method's head by adding game display game display and we hit Alt plus return and select import game display. But it's not working. Wait a minute. It looks like the access modifier isn't allowing us to import this class. So we need to go to the game display class and declare the class to be public. Now we can swoop back again and import it. And what do you think we should do now? Well, since the actual drawing takes place in the super class and in the health bar, we need to pass the game display to the drawing methods as well. And then those method heads must be changed as well. This exercise is just like opening Russian dolls. We hit Ctrl plus B to get inside the super classes draw method, which is the abstract class named circle. And here we finally see some drawing taking place. So let's add a game display here as well in the method head. Then we go back to the player class and do the same thing also for the health bar. Click Ctrl plus B, scroll down to the draw method and add the game display to the method head. When we go back to the player class, we see that we have a new error saying that class player must either be declared abstract or implement the abstract method draw canvas from the game object class. So what has happened is that when we change the header of the player's draw method, we are no longer overriding the game object's draw method, since the two method heads are only considered the same if both the name of the method and the number of arguments with corresponding types are the same. So we need to navigate to the game object class and also here add the game display to the draw method's head. Are we done now? Please let us be done now. Yes, everything in the game class is not red, so that means we are done. Now we can just run our game, aha, just as I predicted, nothing has changed, good. But um, now we will start with the magic, we will figure out how we want to use this interesting game display. So, to know what logic we need in the game display class, we can work our way backwards by going to the draw method in the circle class. Here we can see that the canvas is used for drawing a circle, where the position in X and Y tells the method where in the game the circle should be drawn. And to convert the coordinate system of each circle object in the game, we can invent a method in the game display called game to display coordinates X, which will take position X as argument, and we can then copy the method for the position in Y and change the method name from X to Y. Then we hit Alt plus return, and select create method and we can declare the return value to be of type double and of course we do the same thing for game display coordinate y method then we need to use the theory from the whiteboard in the beginning of this episode and we return the value we get when we take the input x and add a variable called game to display coordinate offset x which correspond to the x component of the b vector from the drawing we made and we can then proceed to create a field for it in game display. We then copy the method body and paste it inside the body of game to display coordinates x and change the x to y and also add a field for it. And now we have to think about how to update the game to display coordinate offset. And it may not be obvious, but since the b vector depends on the position of the player, we actually need to update this offset every rendering cycle of the game. So we create the method public void update. And here we will use the equation b equals c minus a, where b is the game to display coordinate offset, c is the display center, and a is the game center vector. So we need to write the equation for both the x and y components of the vectors. And now we only need to figure out the display center coordinates and also set the game center to the player's position. We create fields for the display center in both x and y. We can continue by setting the game center x equal to center object dot get position x. 
where the center object could be any game object to center the screen around, but for us it will be the player. We can then copy the statement and change the x's to y's. Then we create a field for the center object and declare it as a game object since we only need to access the position of the object and don't care in this place if the center object is a player enemy or spell for instance. And to get the reference to the center object, we need a constructor to pass it in. So we write public game display and in its body we write this dot center object equals center object. And below that we calculate the display center x by taking the width of the display in pixels and dividing it by 2.0. And for display center y, we instead take the height of the display in pixels and divide it by 2.0. We use 2.0 here since the numerators will be integers and if we divide an int by an int, we get the result rounded down to the nearest integer. But by adding a decimal point to the denominator, we will force Java to preserve floating point accuracy in the division. Now we can just add the int width pixel to the constructor's head, as well as the int height pixels, and finally the game object center object. Boom! Now the game display implementation is done. We can get back to the game class now and start by adding an update call of the game display inside the update method. Since we want all objects to be updated to their new positions before we calculate the game to display coordinate offset, we need to place the update call after all other updates. And we write game display dot update. Then we only need to initialize the game display. So we write a comment in the constructor saying initialize the game display and center it around the player. And if you remember the constructor of the game display, you know that we need the width and height of the phone's display. These values we can get by declaring display metric display metric equals new display metric. And then we get the context of the game class and cast it to an activity object. And don't forget to import the activity here. On the activity context we call get window manager and on the return value we call get default display. And that's not it because on the return value we need to call get metrics and pass in the display metric as argument. Then when we initialize our game display to a new game display we supply display metric dot width pixels as the first arguments and display metric dot height pixels as the second. And the last thing we do is to pass the player as the third argument, which will automatically be casted as a game object. Done! Let's play! Ow, oh, seriously! Everything is working except the health bar. Then let's jump into the health bar class and for each coordinate in the draw rect calls, we need to convert the x and y values just as we did for the circle class. We use the game display dot game to display coordinate x on the health left variable and use the y conversion on the health top variable. And we use the same pattern for the health right and health bottom coordinates. Now let's run the game again. No, are you kidding me? Ah, we forgot the border of the health bar. Let's go back again and do the same conversion for the border variables. I hope you see here that we can just use the same pattern for the method calls as for the other rectangle. So we can just copy and paste the method calls so that both calls look the same. This is the final try. I don't even know if I want uh, the game to work at this point. Success! We are heroes and future generations will remember this day. In the next episode we will take the game to the next level by adding a tile based map to the game. And by the way, I'm sorry it took so long for me to publish this video. The next one will come faster, I promise. So don't forget to give a fat like and subscribe to more expert Dragon Slayer Ninja Slay game development content. Yeah!